Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. We have so much to cover. So Saturday, Donald Trump just destroyed Nikki Haley in South Carolina. And that's huge. He got 60% of the vote. And you know, Kathy, all these other guys that dropped out, DeSantis, Ramaswamy, uh, Chris Christie, and even a couple guys who I, I've even forgotten their names, they were all on the ballot. They, and Ron DeSantis got 2,900 votes. Can you imagine? This I don't is know. Crazy. Isn't that nuts? People have voted for Vivek. But President Trump gets 60% of the vote. And Nikki Haley came out and said, well, you know, there's, there's still people in the Republican Party who aren't voting for him. And I, I did a live stream. And, I, you know, I always take calls when I'm live streaming on YouTube. If you, if you guys follow me on YouTube, Brian Craig Show, I live stream every day of the week. And I take live calls with a toll-free number when I'm live streaming on YouTube. And Richie, the bus driver, called in. And, mm-hmm. and he said, you know, he was saying, well, she's got a point. Not everybody, you know, there are still Republicans who won't vote for her. I pulled up the 1980 South Carolina primary results. 1980 is when Governor Reagan, Ronald Reagan, Governor Ronald Reagan, mm-hmm. the former governor of California, was running for the Republican nomination in 1980. And I pulled up um, South Carolina. It was a three-way race. Now, keep in mind, Trump yesterday, they had like 12 people on the ballot, right? Because the DeSantis's are all on there. But, but it was a three-way race. It was Ronald Reagan, Governor Con- Conley of Texas, who was the uh, guy that was in the car with President Kennedy when, he, when Kennedy got shot in Dallas. And Bush 41 was running in the primary. So it was Governor Reagan versus George Bush 1 and Governor Conley. Ronald Reagan won, of course, with 54% of the vote. So President Trump got a higher percentage of the Republican vote. Yeah, he got more votes than Reagan. And then Reagan did in 1980. And, you know, anytime you have a primary, it's always split like this. President Trump's breaking records with these high numbers. I've never heard anyone say, well, they didn't get 100% of the vote. Plus, let me ask you this. So he's not really winning. When Reagan ran... How many Democrats voted in that primary? Uh, zero, I would imagine, yeah. Nikki Haley got like 30%. Probably half of those voters were Democrats. So you shouldn't, even, and stuff. you shouldn't even count that. Yeah. Okay? Because those are people that will not vote for her in the general election. And she is completely deluded or lying, one or the other, if she thinks that she can beat Biden. She is getting anything, any votes she is getting at least half. At least half are Biden supporters. Yeah. I mean, they shouldn't even be allowed to vote in these primaries. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But so you need to take that away from her. And then it would be more realistic. It would be Trump 60 and she'd be at like 15. And and they this this ridiculous standard that they're saying is, well, he didn't he only got 60 percent of the vote. He didn't get 100 percent of the Republic. So so that yeah. means he didn't win. I mean, I've never heard such bizarre they're just, they're um, math in my in my life. Sixty percent. It's a record. Is a lot, and it's a record. He did better than Reagan. Uh, it's a record, and and anybody, and I, I, we were talking about this in the car on the way home from lunch today, and I, you said DeSantis is going to be on the ballot in Florida. That's what they're saying, and. I know people in your listening audience, and I can name a few, which I won't, that are going to probably vote for DeSantis, and they're idiots. Yeah, they're stupid. It's it's like a, uh, what do they call that when you vote like that? It's like a protest vote or something. Yeah, protest vote. You're wasting your vote, you're wasting your time, and you're not helping the country if you do that. Then just stay home. Going there, I don't know what thrill they get out of it. Going there like they're sticking it to Trump. He's still going to win the the Mm -hmm. state. He's still going to be the nominee. You have zero impact on this. If you want to have impact, vote for Trump. Yeah, and then um, because you know the the South Carolina primary was on Saturday, which is is really nice. I would I I wish that all elections were on Saturday because most people, not everybody, but most people are off work on Saturday, and it would it would be nice. But um, I was kind of excited because even though it was one state, I don't get to stay up late for the results very often because I have to get up so early in the morning right. for the show. And a lot of prep goes into being on the air. So I always go to bed early on every election night because right. I have to get up so early. And this one was on Saturday night in South Carolina. And I thought, well, this is exciting. I'm going to get to stay up all night and, and watch. <laughs> and the second, it, the polls closed it's at incredible. seven. And as soon as the polls closed, 
CNN and all the rest called it immediately. I think that was and, a record. Yeah. The, well, the reason they did that was, and this this is the kind of thing I was looking forward to. They didn't do that county by county breakdown, right? Right. You know, and what what happens when these things happen is you get the county by county breakdown, and then you don't know how this county is going to go. This county went. They for did Trump. it later. Yeah. Well, they did after it, they. The reason they did it that way, yeah. Is and they did and they declared Trump the winner right away and everything else. They didn't want Trump in their mind to get credit for something big and that's drawn out all night or drawn over. They just wanted to get it done like it's no big. Okay, Trump won. They didn't want to. They didn't want to prolong it. And uh, there's no way they had the results in. They called that election based on the polls. Uh, I mean, I could not bizarre. believe they literally called it. Like a minute later, I, I don't think that. they've ever called Not an even. election <laughs> no, that was, fast. Never. And you're right. They did it. Be, you know, if you watch CNN and we don't watch CNN, but on the election, we usually do because they have very good election coverage The with the guy at the board. John right, King. John King. And I like to see that. I like to see the breakdown and, and there, there's the buildup. Well, they wanted to take that away from Trump, the buildup completely, yeah. and I think they knew they were going to call it before it even started. They knew they were going to call it a week ago. And yeah. Jake Tapper is such an angry, nasty, frustrated, yeah. small-minded man. You can see his frustration with his stupid little jabs that he takes at Trump. And these elections, he's always there when they're calling them, yeah. him and John King. I promise you this was his idea. Like, let's not, like like the last time they had an election on a state, they didn't even have Trump on the screen. Like, mm -mm. he wasn't even in the race. Mm -mm. And this is these people at CNN sitting around in a circle jerk thinking about, okay, how can we screw it to Trump? And Jake Tapper or one of these small-minded idiots probably said, you know what, let's just call the race. Let's just really take it away from mm -hmm. him and yep. call it right away yep. and take away any buildup or any momentum or excitement and just flat out call it immediately. And then boom. Well, that's just a stupid way to handle it because it, calling it so fast and Trump came out right away and spoke and he was all excited. It just makes Trump look good. And it's they obviously don't care about their ratings because part of the no, they news don't care. rating is that buildup is keeping people engaged. And if you call a race within the first minute, people are going to go watch something else. And, and, how, and, and how stupid. How, how could they even have the results yet? They, uh, it's they, ridiculous. They just did not. They were trying to downplay Trump's success. Now, I want to play this clip. Good this luck. is uh, part of Nikki Haley's defeat speech it sounds like an acceptance speech. she's insane but this is her part of her defeat speech last night i couldn't be more worried about america it seems like our country is falling apart but here's the thing america will come apart if we make the wrong choices <laughs> This has never been about me or my political future. Even though she says me and my in this in the same sentence, she, you know, it's not about me, or, but but I say me and my in the same sentence. We need to beat Joe Biden in November. Yeah. I don't believe Donald Trump can beat Joe Biden. Okay. Now she can't beat Donald Trump, and she how's she going to beat Joe Biden? You know, she well, she, all her voters are Democrats. She's she's got some traitor Republicans, and then she's got Democrats and Independents exactly. voting for her. And you know, she's been doing these Democrat fundraisers, and they're lying to her. So they're telling her that we're going to vote for you in November instead of Joe Biden. That's why we're here donating to you, I guess. And she believes that that line of garbage. But this this whole thing that Trump can't beat Biden, which, by the way, is not true. Trump is leading Biden in all the polls, all the polls he's leading Biden in, if you go look at them. And and some new ones came out yesterday. I wanted but, to. But how, yeah, how, how does she think she's going to beat Biden? She's not. If she can't even win the Republicans. Well, like I said, half the people that vote for her are Democrats. So you got to take her percentage and divide it by half minimum. Yeah, at least. If she is depending on Democrats to get votes. 
How can she go up there and say with a straight face that she's going to beat Biden? She's lying to you. Or lying to herself. And she knows she's lying. She's insane. Okay, yesterday I retweeted this thing to you, and I thought it was fake. But Kat Turd just tweeted it. What? It is a conversation between Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer. Okay, now, st- okay, before okay, you play this. I think this, this is real. Before you play this, I don't think this is real. Well, you can't you, play you, it you because can't, you can't hear it. It has subtitles. Okay. The, it's, it's, um, it's Biden and Schumer talking on the tarmac outside of Air Force One. The engines are running. You can't hear anything. And then there's subtitles of their conversation. It's not. It, it's, Why do you think this isn't real? The things they I, I watched it earlier this morning, and the things they're saying they would know. It's it's fake. It's kind of like when they uh, people take that that scene of Hitler from Downfall, and then they always change the words. You know, the subtitles well, of what Hitler's saying to the you generals. Think that because you you you've been saying and you believe that these people are corrupt as hell, and here you have a conversation. Of them I can't speaking this is real. In, in their corrupt terms, and now you're saying it's not true. I oh, I'm, I know they're corrupt, but I don't think that 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 there's no way. I'd be shocked if that. Uh, well, I can't really play the audio because there's engines. Well, does the over, story tell you what they say? Cat. Yeah, it's Chuck Schumer talking to Biden. Okay, so let me play it, and I'll I'll read to you what. Yeah, it turn says. down the volume so I don't hear the okay. engine noise. This is Chuck Schumer talking to Biden. All you can hear is an engine noise, but I retweeted it. Cat Turd tweeted it. And the, it's the, getting a lot of plays. What they're, what it's saying is is that some lip reader transcribed their conversation. So why do you think this isn't true? Well, read, read the okay. subtitles. So I'm starting with Chuck Schumer talking to Biden. If you reschedule, can I get credit for it? We'll see. Okay. I just need more delays to show one particular donor I'm delaying reform. I, I, just, I know yeah. I can keep blaming Republicans and MAGA. I'm a pro. I've done it for six years now. I can keep doing it. Biden says, you really think that's still working? Chuck Schumer, yeah, yeah. Biden, my problem is that all these voices pushing for reform are getting loud. Cops, lawyers, governors, DAs, Weldon Angelos. I even have Mike Tyson calling out my bullshit. Warren is calling me for reform every freaking day. No, that's not Schumer, true. Schumer, that's okay. You're the president. You can do it. Look at how I'm fully using my privilege and power of Senate majority. I can delay as much as I want and blame my opponents. No, that's not real. Biden. Kathy. Okay, let me think about it. It's not real. <laughs> okay. That's not real. It's not well, real. Cat Turd retweeted it. It's funny. Called him a it's piece funny. So you know okay. what? Like last week. The, but is it that far fetched? No, like last. You guys got to be careful. Okay. Last. <laughs> a lot, the technology is so advanced and people get so. Tr- last week, I got two calls about this on on, okay. on Friday show. There was this video of Michael Moore praising Donald Trump. And I'm like, what? I can't believe I had not heard about this. <laughs> yeah, you know, if, if Michael Moore's praising Trump like Michael Rappaport did, I would I'm sure to know about it. And it was a it was uh, an out of context edit for, from one of his movies talking about Trump. Uh, no, that's not real, Kathy. People just put the subtitles to okay, it. Okay, I'm going to play this. Jen Psaki said Trump is actually running to end the presidency as we know it. Let's hear what Trump said. That Jen Psaki is 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 all upset about. Let me turn up the volume on my phone. Nikki Haley is running for president, as many many people have before her in her party and the Democratic Party. Trump is running for something else entirely. The office he is seeing, is eyeing, is looking to, does not resemble the office of the president of the United States. Trump is actually running to end the presidency as we know oh. it. I'm not letting you in on some big secret here. Trump is telling us that this is what he plans to do. Over and over again, his intentions are clear as day. To anyone watching, listening to him over the course of his campaign, all the speeches he's giving. I mean, let's just take the last couple of days, because just over the last what is three she talking days, about? Trump gave three of the most bizarre, I don't unhinged, know. bigoted, very hard to follow speeches I have ever heard him give. He trivialized black voters with a disgusting and racist rant on Friday night, claiming that the black community likes him more because... He was indicted and has a mugshot. (laughs) He referred to himself as a political dissident on Saturday, which is an insult to real political dissidents around the world, of which there are many. He also cast November's election as, quote, judgment day. And that's just a sampling. A sampling. All right, hit pause. How does does that have to do with ending the presidency? Everything she said is true, and it's not changing the presidency. In fact, um, this thing that he said about uh, black supporting him because of the mugshots and stuff is 
there was a complete meltdown on Meet the Press today about it. I'm going to play the audio of that in a few minutes. Um, what, what she's, everything she said about him is true, yeah. except the part that he's trying to end the presidency. This, I don't know how she came comment, to that conclusion with that this, stuff. This comment of black voters relating to him because of this, because the justice system, uh, li- listen to the liberals, that's exactly ha- has been right. so weighted against blacks for so long. That's that's why that, they relate. See, she's they so racist that, yeah. that she sees it as him calling black people thugs. No, no. That's not what he no, meant. no. He meant that they see the injustice that he's going through yeah. and they relate to yeah. that. Yeah, and what was the second thing she said he's doing? The the first thing about blacks, I forgot what the second thing she said that he was doing. And then the thing about Judgment Day at the end. Yeah, Judgment Day. Well, it is Judgment Day. It's a judgment as whether or not the United States is going to survive or are we going to or are we going to lose our entire civilization since we're being overrun during this this uh invasion at the at the southern border. But, you know, this is what Trump derangement syndrome does to people. Absolutely. When, when people, you know, hate anyone, it could be Trump or anyone. When, when someone is consumed with hate against someone, they, they can't see any right in any, anything they do. No. You deal with and, that, too, with some of your colleagues. Oh, yeah. You know, and this thing about um, blacks relating to him over crime, these, these things that he's being accused of and these mugshots and everything, Joe Biden – is probably responsible for putting more black men in bondage than any other man and alive. And Kamala Harris. He was responsible for that um, uh, sentencing guideline change on uh, crack cocaine and right. things like this that just loaded prisons up with people from what are considered not even drug offenses anymore with all the legalization that's going on. Um, but Jin, so- remember Jin Psaki was at the White House working for Obama when President-elect Trump showed up to meet President Obama. And she was one of those people outside the White House that had the sad face. I remember that. Yeah, you know, so she's um, she's out of it. I want to tell you guys, Mike Lindell, who was absolutely amazing, you know, he uh, had another $5 million judgment against my pillow this last week. You guys may have seen that. And I saw him on Right Side Broadcasting yesterday. And Mike Lindell, he was being interviewed. He, he was talking about this. He's so much like Trump. This guy just got a, a $5 million judgment uh, that he against him, which is absurd. They're, they're they're trying to do to him what they're trying to do to Trump. They're trying to break him financially, right? He's Exa- got all these judgments. That's exactly what they're trying to. And do. And I watched this interview with Mike Lindell. It was done by Brian from Right Side yesterday. And Mike Lindell, he's on top of the world, you know. But uh, the rest of us, if we had a five million dollar judgment like that, we'd be throwing <laughs> yeah. up, right? Yeah. And and Mike Mike Lindell, he Absolutely. knows he knows a good. Now listen, Mike Lindell. Uh, is offering free shipping on all purchases at MyPillow.com with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. And so this is a great deal. Free shipping on all items, no matter how large, no matter how small. And you also get the special deal. So like, uh, for example, the MyPillow mattress topper 2.0, I'm I'm sorry, the MyPillow 2-inch mattress topper, which we have on um, our guest bed, which yeah. I slept on a couple nights. I didn't know that was the 2.0. Yeah, super comfortable. It's amazing. The, the MyPillow uh, uh, two-inch mattress topper, because people sometimes ask me, is the two-inch and the three-inch a big difference? Well, we have the three-inch on, uh, on our marital bed, but Kathy was under the weather, so I was sleeping in the guest room, and I did not know that was the two-inch mattress mm-hmm. topper. It's great. The two-inch mattress topper is 50% off with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. But if you order it now, you get the 50% off and free shipping. And that's a big item. That's a lot. And and so whatever the item is, you get the special discounted price and free shipping with our promo code Kane. K-A-N-E. And if you're doing spring cleaning coming up, which uh, a lot of people do, in fact, our daughter's already done it in California and it's, it's not even spring yet, but a lot of people do spring cleaning. And uh, if you want to get new linens, uh, new towels, sheets, Things like that, freshen things up, get a new look. I personally like white linens, but we do have different color towels from my pillow. I have some blue and some of the taupey, which I like, but I really like white sheets and white stuff, even though I have different colors, but that's my top preference. Um, but if you want to update everything, I, I tell you, the free shipping is not going to last, and it is a great time. It will end without that notice, stuff by the is way. heavy. That stuff is not cheap to ship. I mean, it's linens and towels are not light. Yeah. And and mattress toppers, these things are like vacuum sealed, some of them. And some of them weigh a good 20 pounds, 20, 30 pounds when they get here. 
Um, so it's really good to take advantage. Savings. You can really load up and take advantage and now, save a lot now of the money. F- the free shipping will end without notice. So it's that's pro- right. It's promo code Kane at checkout, K A N E. And remember, you're supporting Mike Lindell. But you're also supporting this program and all the content that I bring you. That's true. Uh, my YouTube channel, the podcast, the radio show, everything. Promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. We'll be right back. Have you ever found yourself having a conversation that's unpredictable, but it's entertaining? Rowan and Caitlin did, and they turned their conversations into a podcast. Lunch Break RC, available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Lunch Break RC is your go-to escape, where they talk about everything. On an upcoming episode, they talk about a flight from New Mexico to Chicago, where a drunk passenger opened the emergency exit window, and passengers had to tackle him. It's a wild ride. You won't want to miss it. They talk about a lot more, too, from AI to Bigfoot, conspiracy theories, there's even episodes where they just have to vent. Each episode is a unique discussion about a different experience, and it feels just like those random yet memorable lunch break chats. New episodes drop Fridays at 5. Add Lunch Break RC with Rowan and Caitlin to your podcast playlist on Spotify and Apple Podcast. Listen in, laugh, ponder, and enjoy the ride. Lunch Break RC with Rowan and Caitlin. Start listening right now. How would you like to live a life of financial freedom? Of course you would. Who doesn't, right? But how? You just need the right help and guidance. And that's what you will find in the new book from author Adnan Sani, The Wealth GPS. Discover your path to wealth. Available on Amazon. With this must-read and life-changing book, you'll stop living in a world of financial uncertainty and enter the clear skies of financial prosperity. Author Adnan Sani debunks the myths of overnight success and reveals the true essence of wealth accumulation. It's a game of time, strategy, and persistence. Through his own personal experience, the author will guide you through the crucial steps of securing the right job, gaining experience, starting your venture, automating, and investing. The Wealth GPS is perfect for anyone willing to take control of their financial destiny. Author Adnan Sani's message is clear. If you don't just lose, eventually you'll win. This is your call to action and the time to lay the foundations for a future rich in abundance. Order your copy right now on Amazon. Available in Kindle, paperback, and Kindle Unlimited. The Wealth GPS. Discover your path to wealth from author Adnan Sani. Your journey to financial success begins right now. Are you fed up by the high cost of loaded teas at your local nutrition shop? You're not alone. So was Alicia, and she embarked on a mission to make loaded teas more affordable and accessible for everyone. The result? Enchanted Tea by Alicia on Etsy.com. Enchanted teas are good for you. They're a natural appetite suppressant. They can increase your daily water consumption. They're 100% sugar-free. Contain vitamin C, B6, B12, and folic acid. They can boost your metabolism and increase energy. They also can stimulate brain function. They're keto, Atkins, and diabetic friendly too. Alicia is a dedicated nurse turned tea artisan. Alongside her veteran husband, their Etsy shop has made over 17,000 sales already and has a huge array of 50 individual flavors. Recently, Enchanted Tea by Alicia introduced a line of protein meal replacement shakes. Each packet is filled with 20 grams of protein, only 110 calories, and they're delicious. And if you're seeking an extra boost, the loaded protein fusion can Finds their signature loaded tea powder with unflavored whey. It's available in any of their 50 flavors. And an Enchanted Tea by Alicia on Etsy, free shipping to every customer. That's right, free shipping. It's time to transform your tea time with Enchanted Tea by Alicia. Online at Etsy.com slash shop slash Enchanted Tea by Alicia. Enchanted Tea by Alicia on Etsy, where wellness meets delicious innovation. Etsy.com slash shop slash Enchanted Tea by Alicia. You are listening to the Brian Craig Show podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at BrianCraigShow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Okay, so Donald Trump caused this major meltdown on Meet the Press today, which I'm going to, uh, we're going to go through it right now. This is beautiful. And it's when that topic came up that we talked about in the first segment, when President Trump says that blacks relate to him because of what he's going through with this lawfare. And Kristen Welker, she's the new hostess over there at Meet the Press. She had on Byron Donalds. And, you know, there's all this talk about who his VP will be. 
I like Byron Donalds. I know he's from Florida like Trump, but I, I like Byron Donalds, and he's he's so good. I love Byron Donalds. He's so good. And <laughs> so uh, uh, Christian Welker, she brings up this thing about what Trump said. She plays the audio, and then she gets into a heated argument with Byron Donalds over this. Oh, and this yeah. Is, this is, he's awesome. This is beautiful. Listen to this. So this is, uh, this is today on Meet the Press. Well, it is great to have you, Congressman. And on Friday, you introduced Donald Trump at a group of black conservatives. He made a number of headline making comments, including this one. Take a look. I got indicted a second time and a third time and a fourth time. And a lot of people said that that's why the black people like me, because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. And they actually exactly. viewed me as I'm being. Do you hear the applause? And this is a black audience, black and sir, they're applauding in the background. People like me because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. And they actually viewed me as I'm being discriminated against. Congressman, it sounds like Donald Trump was implying that he can win black voters because they get indicted all the time, too. Is that what he was saying? Yeah. Okay. Well, wait, uh, okay. what's wrong with that? The, the, that's true. That's wait, well, isn't that what liberals always say. Wait, isn't that why Bragg is letting well, fall out of jail? See, the whole thing with Jim Crow was using the legal system against blacks that they didn't like. You know, the, the re, the, I, yeah. I recommend this book a lot. There's a there's there's a book that everyone should get. It's called Slavery by Another Name. Slavery by yes, Another Name. Yes, I remember name. you read that book. And it's about how the Democrats used the legal system to re-enslave blacks during Jim Crow. And what they did right. is they would blacks would get arrested all the time for they they'd say loitering or you know just nonsense. And then they would have them working in factories. Sometimes they'd be working on farms. Sometimes they'd be working in a lumber mill. Right. And uh, it's an incredible book. So they were enslaved all over again. It's called Slavery by Another Name. Yeah. It, it's written by an author who's a white man, but his last name is Blackman. Uh, it, he's a white guy. His last name is Blackman. I don't remember his first name. I have the book in my closet put away like, in, you know, and and because this book is such an important book, I kept it. And I don't want to ever get rid of this book, Slavery by Another Name. But also uh, what I'd mentioned to you. Um, the sentencing guy and, and Democrats all talk about this all the time, but they don't want to talk, but they hate everything Trump says so that now they're all over him. Um, Democrats have been saying since the nineties, how racist the three strikes your outlaw exactly. is and, and how the sentencing guidelines for powder versus crack cocaine were racist, et cetera, et cetera. And Donald Trump's just echoing what Democrats have been saying for 35 exactly. years. And now all of a sudden that's racist, but, but. Incredible. What Donald Trump is saying is blacks in this country get it. The, look at look at George Floyd, right? You know, they talk about George Floyd, the Democrats. The, blacks see how unjust the the league, driving while black, things like this can be, and they and they relate to him being oppressed by this by this system. And uh, Kristen Walker How is that racist? Well, she's so consumed with her Trump derangement syndrome. Yeah. She doesn't see that well, he's echoing you know, what Democrats. He, he wakes up in the morning and 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 shaves yeah. and takes a shower and that's racist. Yeah. So uh, anyway, she has Byron Donalds on. Who, if you don't know, he's black. Byron Donalds, a great congressman from our state yeah, of he's Florida, awesome. and uh, they get into it over this. And a lot of people said that that's why the black people like me because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against, and they actually viewed me as I'm being discriminated against. Congressman, it sounds like Donald Trump was implying that he can win black voters because they get indicted all the time, too. Is that what he was saying? Well, I think it's in part of that. It's part of it, Kristen. Look, the, the, it was a great night, Friday night in Columbia, South Carolina. The president was really just enjoying himself. It was a great celebration for black conservatives across our country. But let's be very clear. Our economy is a mess. Our border is completely unsecured. These things are co causes of major concerns for black voters like it is for every voter in our country. But then when you layer on the fact that, yes, this is political persecution from the Department of Justice and from 
radical DAs throughout our country, this is something similar that black people had to deal with the, with the justice system themselves. And so their, their look of it is real simple. Well, dang, if the government's going after him with foolishness, uh, he can't be that bad, especially considering the fact that Joe Biden is terrible at his job. Well, con- Congressman, let's just be clear. All four indictments against former President Trump were brought by grand juries. They're in- I mean, give me a break. Right. Brought yeah, by grand in, juries. In very liberal cities. And, and notice this condescending tone like, well, with all due respect, I must correct you, Congressman. These were brought by grand jury. You know, you know what? And I wonder how many of those grand jury members regret what they did. Well, and you know that that old saying, you can indict a ham sandwich right. and a grand jury. For President Trump were brought by grand juries. There is no evidence that the indictments are political in nature. Oh, but let me stick to the question here. Let me get you to respond to Biden. There's no evidence. Are you kidding me? Look at Fannie Give Willis sending her, her boy toy gigolo me meeting with. Uh, this is why uh, the, nobody trusts the media yeah. anymore. You know, Fann- Fannie Willis sent her uh, gigolo boyfriend to meet with Biden's lawyer at the White House before the indictment. All these things. The judge in the in the in the D.C. case. uh uh, was Hunter's boss at the law firm? Give me a break. Campaign co-chair uh, and former Congressman Cedric Richmond, who said this about his comments. Donald Trump claiming that black Americans will support him because of his criminal charges is insulting. It's moronic. And it's just plain racist. How do you respond to that charge that it's just plain racist? What I would say is that Cedric is trying to play politics and use racial politics even now as we get into the general election. That's one. Number two, like I said at the top, the number one reason why minority voters in our country want to support Donald Trump is because he did the job of president. He did a great job as president. Our country was secure. The economy was great. These are all things that Donald Trump talked about Friday night. He also did talk about the indictments. What Americans don't want to see, especially black Americans and anybody else, they don't want to see a political justice department. They don't want to see a two-tier system of justice. They want justice to be followed. They want lady justice to be blind. That's what the American people well, want. That's what black voters want. That's what everybody wants. Again, there's no evidence that the indictments against him are politicized, but sticking... Okay. Uh, Letitia, Kathy, Letitia James in New York mm-hmm. ran promising that she was going to arrest Trump, remember? Exactly, yep. I mean, how how does it not? How is there no evidence that th- this is just repeat a lie often enough? Things she's doing. That's right. She ran on the platform that she was going to go after Trump, use, misusing her her office as attorney general. That doesn't get more political than that. Black voters want. That's what everybody wants. Again, there's no evidence that the indictments against him are politicized. But sticking to this question, were you That's offended right. at all by his comments, Congressman? No, I wasn't, because I understood what the president was talking about. And like I've, I've said now for the third time, he talked about all the reasons why minority voters want to support him. And, Kristen, let me push back a little bit. You have to acknowledge the fact that now that the Robert Hur report has come out about Joe Biden's misuse of classified information, which is a violation of the Espionage Act, he had no rights to any of those documents when he was a senator Con- or a vice president, yet there are no charges against against vice yeah, against President but, but Biden. But President Trump is under prosecution. I have to, on hold now. on, I have, to, I ha- I have to hit the all. pause button for one minute, Congressman, because the her report was very clear sure. that there was not enough evidence to bring charges. Ag- I mean, we saw the boxes of the documents Incredible. in his garage, out yeah. the, falling out of the boxes on the floor. This is why nobody in an trusts open the media, because she's an advocate, because she I mean, she spent Christmas with Obama. She is yeah. uh, defending Biden for because of her own political connections her own political bias. She probably talked to Obama before she even did the damn show and, and all this stuff and probably consults with him on a daily basis. Nobody in the media is free of bias. They're supposed to be, but things are so political. They, they are not free of bias. They, I'm sure they never were. So people, I think, are finally, because of Trump, oh, realizing yeah. this. They are finally seeing this. And she is just gaslighting everybody. She is telling everybody what you see is not she's reality. A, she's a campaign surrogate. You know, don't believe what you see. Believe me, like yeah. Trump, when he was talking about the J6, he said it was a protest. He said, he said, I remember that one summer and they were burning down all the cities, Antifa and Black yeah. Lives Matter. And he said there was a CNN reporter standing in front of a city that was burning down 
to the ground and he was telling you that it was peaceful. Uh, most, he mostly, said these people most, just lie to you. He said it's mostly a peaceful protest and a whole block was burning down. <laughs> I know, right. And then it's like that scene in Naked Gun with yeah. Leslie Nielsen's like nothing to see here. And remember and the whole thing's blowing remember up. Remember when it's they were hilarious. telling us when that was going on, Antifa is an idea, not an organization. I mean, and he said <laughs> none of those people got treated the way they did with J6. He was a protest. That's it. And and he said it's totally political. And he's right, but they will go on TV literally with with the block yeah. burning behind them yeah. and telling you that what's happening is peaceful and nothing. Well, to let's see play here. the right. I mean, so they just lie to so you. So this is Byron Donald's uh, Meet the Press with Kristen Welker today. I to, hold on, I have to, I have, I have to hit the pause button for one minute, Congressman, because the her report was very clear sure. that there was not enough evidence to bring charges. Now, the photographs of the boxes with the documents falling out, there's yeah, no evidence. That's, that's real secure. Against President Biden, and that ultimately there was not enough. That is what the her report said. Not, Congressman, that no, is no, exactly no, no, what no. the her report said. The, yes, it the, is. It the said the that there wasn't is enough, clear. There the wasn't espionage enough act evidence to bring charges. You cannot possess those those documents. As a senator or a vice president, you have no right to those documents as a senator or a vice president. Uh, they must remain in a Congress secure facility. Joe Biden took them from a skiff. That's a violation of the Espionage right. Act, and period. OK. All right. Bottom line, though, her himself said there wasn't enough evidence. to. Oh, my goodness. Well, her himself is corrupt. OK, how about that? If a, a, a guy who's named her, yeah, I got, got, you know. He's got enough issues already. My goodness. Talk about activist media. Well, and what, what he could have said is he could have said, well, her also said that Joe Biden is incompetent and can't put two sentences yeah. together yeah. and he's not fit to be president. So do you yeah. agree with him on that, too? Yeah. That's what I would have done if I was Byron. I would have said, well, you know, what do you think about her saying that Joe Biden has no memory and isn't is incapable exactly. of running the country? Is exactly. he right on that, too, then? I mean, you know what I mean? It's it's ridiculous, these people. And, I, and she probably wouldn't know what to say to that. Well, you know, listen, Trump had a had I can't a, stand anybody Tr at MSNBC. Trump had a great night. And, yeah, you know, did. and now Nikki Haley, after she lost in her home state, kicked, you know, lost in her hometown. See that one of the reasons I wanted to see the county by county, I was I was very surprised that and I've not seen the outcome on this yet on how the county she was born and grew up in did. Like, uh, uh, what percentage did she, she get versus Trump in her home county? I don't think they wanted us to know that. They don't but, want us to know. But I got to admit, after they announced the winner, I you fell asleep like 20 minutes later. Yeah. And I, Nothing to like see. at 730, I started watching something else because I was like, well, you I was, know, I, I, there, there's no build up here. And there's, I like the breakdown and to see. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't even know. And they did the same thing on Fox because I flipped to them to say, well, maybe they, 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 they got the map and break it down. But they did not do the same thing. And, no. and another thing CNN did with with uh, one of the states, I can't remember. It was very sneaky. New Hampshire. New Hampshire. And it was something they had never done before. And Brian and I were shocked. They had reporters at multiple, multiple poll locations. And they would go up and show people counting the votes. It was very intimidating. They were. They, they and I were, thought it was very uh, strange. It was very weird. And they they did. You know this this the way they handled the announcement in South Carolina is is. That's what I'm I've saying. Never, they keep doing weird things. Never seen this happen before. Yeah. And it, Trump is it. I keep calling it, guys, the Trump miracle. For for Trump to be performing like he is with everything they've done to him. Is amazing, and he Nikki said he's Haley do better than ever. Nikki, this time, Nikki Haley keeps acting like she is winning all the time. Well, she just <laughs> she just tweeted something. She's so stupid. she's lost three times stupid. now. She's so stupid. And I, I bird well, up, President I Trump to calls her, her uh, tweet. He calls her bird brain. Yeah, well, she is a bird because she's stupid. Uh, let me let me bring it up because it was so ridiculous. Yeah, what um how she how she does this crazy math in her head. Um, I'm an accountant. Did you know that? Really? She's an accountant? I'm an accountant. Can she count how many men she had I sex know. with other than her husband <laughs> in her marriage? This is what she tweeted four hours ago, an hour ago. I'm an accountant. I did not know that. She's like Joe Biden. She does everything. I know 40% isn't 50%, but I also know that 40% is not a small number. <laughs> Americans deserve a choice in this election, and I have a duty to give it to them. Well, I, I, ret I retweeted that, and I said to her, out of your 40%, about 20% were Democrats exactly. who are not going to vote for you. 
in the general election. So how do you figure that into your She's Nikki insane. Haley math? Now, I want to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much, everyone. And if you would like to support the program by becoming a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the description of this and every episode. And uh, there's there are a lot of perks and benefits to being a, uh, a Patreon supporter. Patreon supporters have access to commercial-free editions of all podcast episodes. Um, Kathy and I post a lot of exclusive content that we post nowhere else, including videos uh, and and comments and things that no one else sees other than Patreon supporters. And our top Patreon supporters get a live on-air thank you shout-out on each and every podcast episode. So the names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Wesley, Macho, Mike P, Carlos, Paulette, John, Arctic Fox, Heather, David, Maria in Texas, Richard, Alice, K Mac, Lee Zepp, Shauna, Constance, and George. These are our top Patreon supporters. Thank you so much, guys. And Again, if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the description of this and every episode on whatever platform you're listening to us on. All right, we're going to take a break. Don't go anywhere. We've got so much more to cover. My name's Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be right back. Are you a teenager who wants to unlock their full potential? You can. You just need the right help and guidance. And that's what you will find in the book from author Charles E. Tyler. 10 Mindsets to Embrace for Teenage Success, Happiness, and a Determined Path in Life. Available on Amazon. This must-read and life-changing book is your guide to rocking the teenage years with confidence and clarity. It's filled with real-life, no-nonsense advice. You'll discover how to navigate the twists and turns of adolescence. Have you ever wondered how successful people make it look so easy? 10 Mindsets to Embrace reveals their secrets. You'll also find interactive exercises that can boost your emotional intelligence, find your zen, and supercharge your self-awareness and discover the real you. Author Charles E. Tyler's 10 Mindsets to Embrace is a conversation, a guide, and your personal coach. It's perfect for teens who are ready to challenge the norms, make their mark, and become their best selves. And it makes a great gift for parents, teachers, and school counselors to share with their students. 10 Mindsets to Embrace for teenage success, happiness, and a determined path in life is available on Amazon. Order your copy right now and take that first step to the success and happiness that you've dreamed of. Are you living the life that you want to live? Have you tried and tried to find ways to earn extra income but failed? You're not alone. You just need the right help and guidance. If you would like to learn how to unlock multiple streams of income, then visit cutt.ly slash change your life now. There you'll find an enticing program with life-changing products, a breakthrough marketing system, and a huge compensation plan. If traditional selling isn't your style, no worries. Simply refer your friends or anyone you know. Then you can sit back and and watch the earnings roll in. C-U-T-T dot L-Y slash change your life now. That's C-U-T-T dot L-Y slash change your life now. Are you tired of the endless search for affordable contact lenses? Well, your search is over. Say hello to lovemycontacts.com, where premium vision meets unbeatable prices. Lovemycontacts.com isn't just any contact lens retailer. Love My Contacts are powered by real optometrists and vision experts. Yes, that's right. Experts who know eyes and care about yours, ensuring you get the best fit from brands you trust, like AccuView, Bausch & Lohm, Alcon, and Cooper Vision. And guess what? With LoveMyContacts.com's easy subscription service, forget about running low on contacts ever again. Just set it, forget it, and let your lenses come to you. Don't have your prescription handy? No problem. LoveMyContacts.com will retrieve it from your doctor's office, making your experience as seamless as possible. They have the most popular contacts at the best prices too, like AccuView Oasis, The Infuse, and Dailies. It's time to experience the LoveMyContacts.com difference. Visit the site right now. Now, lovemycontacts.com and step into a world where quality meets convenience at prices you'll love. Lovemycontacts.com. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. 
Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Okay, so I just pulled up the Drudge Report during the break. Here's the headline on Drudge Report. 40% of Republicans vote against Trump in South Carolina. Demo- uh, demographic warning signs. He just won 60% of the vote, Incredible. and they're turning that into a law. And I, I told you guys in the first segment, Ronald Reagan, uh, 46% of people didn't vote for Ronald Reagan exactly. in the 1980 South Carolina primary. I've never exactly. heard this, this, this logic that if you don't win 100% of the Republican vote in a primary, it's that you've logic. lost. And what's sad is- lost. It's liberal logic, and what's sad is a lot of so-called conservatives in your audience, and I call them rhinos, uh, are, are, are buying into that and saying the same thing and, and, and parroting that. That is liberal logic. They're going to spin everything to try to make Trump look bad. Okay, you have to remember that. Everything Trump does, he could cure cancer. He even said that. He said once, I could cure cancer, and they would tell me I was putting doctors out of business. Mm-hmm. That is how it is. I mean, no matter what the guy does, but what is good and what what should warm your heart is people have finally are getting it. And I see that. I see that when they go to diners and they interview people and how Trump's doing in the polls. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to do better now than ever. And I think he's right. He's more popular than ever. This thing with the migrants has really affected the black community. and And they are pissed that they never got their reparations. They see all this money that's going to the illegals, that that's their reparation money. A lot of them do see that. And I'm not trying to be racist here because I'm not a racist, but I've seen them say it on television out of their own mouths. That's my money. That should be my reparations. And believe me, it's not just that. The, The other thing that's happening, and I talked about this before, they had a woman from Chicago who voted for the mayor there. She said he was a friend of hers. And she said, I'm voting Republican for the first time in my life across the board. And because they take these community centers now that are in the inner city and they're giving them to the illegals. And these are places where the kids would go to play and, and have, and hang out. It was like a safe place for the kids to go after school. They can't go there anymore. The illegals live there now. They took the kids out. They are so pissed because it is affecting their lives in a very negative way. And that is human nature. Unless something affects you directly, um, usually, typically. Maybe abortion isn't like that because those are all old ladies and lesbians. But typically with people, unless it affects them directly, uh, they might not always care. And people, the liberals don't understand. And Byron Donalds was trying to make this point with her because she kept going back to it. And he kept saying to her, the black community does understand that, some of them, but that's not why they're supporting him. They're supporting him because of the border and the economy. Yeah. But she is stuck on this race baiting mm-hmm. thing because that is how they've always controlled mm-hmm. the blacks, mm-hmm. by race baiting and keeping them angry at the whites. And that's divide and conquer. And it's not working anymore because people are finally realizing the media has been lying and manipulating. Now, I wanted to talk about this thing that's going on about Sylvester Stallone, okay? Because there's a lot of misreporting on this thing with Stallone I just want to talk about, okay? You know, everybody loves Sylvester Stallone, right? I mean, come on. Who doesn't love Rambo and Rocky? You know, I like Sylvester Stallone. In fact— you know, he's got this reality show with his daughters that's on Paramount Plus. I'm not a fan of that, but he had this other show that's on Paramount Plus where he plays a, a a mafia guy that gets out of prison after 20 years, and then he goes out west and starts up a new mob family. I forgot the name of it. I watched the. It's only had one season. It's really good. It's really good. And uh, I think he did it so his daughters could get this reality show because his daughters Isn't have. Isn't it like Tulsa King or something? Tulsa King, yes, yeah. Tulsa King. His daughters have wanted to be like the Kardashians forever, and they've been doing like YouTube show yeah, and stuff. Yeah, he's doing it for his daughters. So I think he did Tulsa King so that his daughters could get this reality show. Okay, so they put out a preview, which is a clip of the new season where Stallone says, we're getting out of California, we're moving to Miami. And everyone is like, oh, look, Stallone, he's moving to Florida. You know, DeSantis is – Casey DeSantis is out there. <laughs> Stallone has had uh, a mansion in Florida since like the 90s. Yeah, that's nothing. Um, I don't know if if this is the same mansion that he's had all these. He had a mansion for a long time 
and he may still have it, I don't know, but in Miami, and he had a fundraiser at his mansion in Miami with President Clinton while President Clinton was president. I remember mm-hmm. it. And he gave Clinton a pair of gloves from the first Rocky movie that he wore at this fundraiser. And uh, he may have a house in Palm Beach, too, uh, Stallone. And I don't know if he still has the Miami mansion or not, but um, he does have a um, a mansion in Palm Beach, not far from Mar-a-Lago. So I don't know if he still has the Miami mansion. But Stallone, uh, I don't know. So he might have sold the Miami mansion and just has the Palm Beach mansion now. Stallone has had a home in Florida for at least 30 years, mm-hmm. okay? So he's not just moving to Florida. He's, he's always been here. You know what, Kathy? I would not be surprised if he's had a home here this whole time and has lived here long enough these 30 years to avoid the state income tax in mm-hmm. California anyway. But this is just a promo he's doing so people will talk about the reality show. And everyone's yeah, making like this he, big deal. Like when him and his wife were getting a divorce over their dog. Yeah. That, that was, was fake too. Yeah, that was PR. That was the, all fake to promote this show for his kids. Yeah, so Stallone has been here many times. In fact, I, I, I was so upset once. And this, this is how long he's lived down here, Stallone. This was before you and I met. He, um, he was at uh, a the Planet Hollywood opening. Because mm. you remember he was in on Planet Hollywood? Yeah. And they opened up a Planet Hollywood in Miami, and I had a press pass. And I got there, and I only went because Stallone, I wanted to meet Stallone, and he left like five minutes before I got there. Mm. I was so mad. Yeah, but you, get, you did get to meet Mel Gibson. I did get to but but I wanted to meet Stallone, and I missed him by five minutes. And so Stallone's been down here in Florida since the 90s. This is not a new thing. He's not finally fed up with California and coming to Florida. But does anybody watch his show? I, I have zero interest. I, in- I like the Tulsa King. They no, only but his reality season. show with his daughters. Oh, I can. Does anybody you know, watch that in, in the no, audience? I no, have. I, I, I don't no. really. The only reality show like that I watch is Beverly Hills Housewives. That's the only one I like. Um, no, I've no there's so in many of them now. Show. They're all they're so scripted. And uh, I'm not really, I, I've seen like tours of his home. His home oh, yeah. is like a, literally a museum to him. It yeah. is the most <laughs> narcissistic. It is full of statues. Of himself. Paintings, of him. awards, all about him. I mean, it's really it's mind bizarre. blowing. Uh, now, okay, you were, people say Trump's arrogant, right? You went to Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> That's not. Trump's home. Did you see a big golden statue of Trump? Did you see anything other than I saw one little plaque, Trump ballroom? Yeah. But did you see on the grounds like things that were all about him? No, no. Were there pictures of him in the bathroom with celebrities? Uh, Only when you're standing at the urinal, you would have to look at a painting of his in front of the urinal. No, I'm kidding. No, there was not that. Yeah, I would think there's nothing. No, 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 you would know. There's no. no pictures of him. I'm all sure there around. are somewhere. No, but where you were. Uh, no, it's, no, where, it's not where, all Where vain. the public goes, you'd think there'd be stuff, right? Like there'd be pictures and statues, the way they portray Trump, but no, nothing. No. It's tacky. No, and by the way, Kathy, I went to the places where the public do not get to go to. I went to the public, you know, when they have events, but I also went to some area oh, okay. where uh, people that normally go there don't get to go. And it's not, I, I saw. There's um, no odes to Trump. There's no, no, it's not like a shrine to himself. Unlike Stallone's house. Oh, Stallone's house is, oh my but, God, But you know, the thi- this, is, this is the thing, okay? So Stallone's been here, and, and I'm not giving Stallone a hard time. I like Sylvester Stallone a lot, and he, he's, to me, he's really amazing. He wears a lot of makeup. He's really amazing. And I, um, I heard Henry Winkler tell a story about Stallone recently, which blew my yeah, mind. Yeah, they're good friends. They were in the Lords of Flatbush well, together. Well, what had happened was they were good friends before either got famous, and— um, Stallone came to Hollywood uh, when Happy Days was on, okay? And his car broke down right at, like, when he got in the town. So he called Henry Winkler, and he was in the car with whoever he was married to at the time, his dog and Stallone. Henry Winkler went and gave him a ride home, and he had the Rocky script, and he was broke. Stallone was broke, and he got Henry Winkler to set up a deal because he was Fonzie then. He got ABC to buy – the Rocky script, so Sylvester Stallone could get some money, and then all of a sudden, this is now this is Henry Winkler telling this story. Okay, yeah, he just wrote a book, Henry yeah. Winkler. So, so very good. So you know, but uh, and then Henry Winkler said, then Stallone came to him and said he had gotten an offer for Rocky. He wanted to get it back. He's like, we just sold it to ABC. So Henry Winkler said he went back to the executives at a- a- ABC and got the rights back. 
So Stallone could sell it and make wow. a motion picture out of it. You know, but any, I don't know how true all that is. Cause you know, so Henry Winkler told that story, not Stallone. Sure Henry, but the Fonz doesn't lie. The Fonz no, but, doesn't lie. but everyone's the star of their own movie. And yeah, when I they know. tell a story, they always make themselves the hero. Right. I, you know, Especially you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know, but, um, so the thing with, um, uh, Stallone, I'm not, I'm not giving Stallone a hard time or anything guys. I like Stallone. It's just this whole thing is, and now that Casey DeSantis is out there. DeSantis is, what is tr- she doing with the Stallone? She's coming here. Welcome in Florida anytime. Oh God. He's been in Florida since she was in elementary school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's so, had a house in Miami. Forever. So it, again, I know he has a mansion in Palm beach, not far from Mar-a-Lago. I don't know if he still has the Miami mansion or not, but he's, he's all, he's had a home here since the nineties somewhere in Florida. And, uh, this, the DeSantis, Casey DeSantis is trying to make this Ron DeSantis has come back. This Stallone thing. It's so bizarre. I don't know if you guys around the country are seeing this. Maybe I'm seeing it more. Wait a minute. We're she's, in Florida. She's trying to make the Stallone thing DeSantis's comeback. She's like, oh, yeah. Well, she she came out today to welcome Stallone to Florida. He's already been here. He's been here for 30 years. They don't know what they don't know what they're doing. But the ones two. the ones that burn me is this old lady, uh, Howard Stern. OK, who used to be like. I'm fighting the man. I'm standing up against it. Now he's an old lady. Right? Yeah, he's turned into an old woman. Yeah. Howard Stern, who trashes Trump all the time and trashes Republicans all the time, he lives here too, right? He lives here in Florida, not too far from Mar-a-Lago, right, right. up the street from Mar-a-Lago. The reason he is here is so he can avoid all those liberal Democrat taxes in New York State exactly. and New York City. He doesn't want to pay the New York City or the New York State taxes, so he got a place down here in Florida. That's why they you all know? live here. And that's he, why Brett Baer got a house here, too. That's why they all do and it. probably why Hannity moved here, too. Exactly. Because he's got the alimony, and it's it's a lot, so he moved down here. And, you know, when, when somebody like Stern trashes Trump, trashes Republicans, I but know. comes down here because we don't have a state income tax like they do in these liberal states. What do you think states, about that? I, that? That's what burns me, because they're it hypocrites. Seems hypocrite. yeah, they're liars. Like they're yeah. liars. And uh, they don't tell their—, their um, their fans and followers, why they are uh, living in in, right. in in Florida? It's to avoid all the things that they advocate for Democrat um, Democrat ideology. Now, I, I want to tell you guys uh, a bunch of stuff here. Okay, um, this has only just begun. Okay, the, <laughs> Nikki Haley went to Michigan today, and we got the Super Tuesday coming up. Oh, so, so this is going to continue, and the, the, there's only one thing that we have as a negative in the Trump movement. And that is overconfidence. You cannot yes. get overconfident. No. You know, these massive turnouts need to continue. And what did Eric and Trump say that they spent, opposed to her or South Carolina? Um, she spent 16. N- 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 Nikki Haley spent over 16 million in South Carolina. Uh, Trump spent a million and a half. And that was probably yeah. running out venues for speeches, right? Because yeah. he did a lot of speaking. Right. You know, and he has to pay for secure. They have private security and such. It wasn't to like you know pay off donors or or, or ads. Um, this overwhelming turnout mm-hmm. needs to continue, and the turnouts for Trump are so high that you know a lot of people may say in Michigan or wherever else, well, you know, he's doing so well, and I'm really busy or I'm tired. Yeah, don't you do know? that. Don't do that. No, you got it. You got to go out and you got to make sure that you and everyone else you know show up. I really honestly Brian, don't him. think that's going to be an issue. Let's hope that's the only I possible think thing against people are so motivated and 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 I've seen many people on the news say this is that this is a movement. Yep. And when you're a part of a movement, you want your voice heard. That's you're right. motivated to go. And I really don't think that's going to be an issue. I think people you know, it's like when Barack Obama was running. I didn't vote for the guy. No. But a lot of people voted for him because they were motivated to say they voted for the guy. Even if even if they didn't think that he needed their votes, there was motivation there to vote for him because they wanted to say they voted for the first black president, all this stuff there. This is different, obviously, but there's motivation and people like to be a part of something. It's human nature and they're going to vote because they want to be a part of this movement. They want to contribute and they want to be like, I was there and this is a comeback. This is going to be the greatest comeback in politics in the history of the world. And I got to tell you, we watched CPAC, and it was so exciting to see that President Malay. Oh, he's great. Uh, he's got great hair. 
he really has great hair, that guy. Um, he's a handsome guy, I think. And uh, he was extremely stoic. And they had a translator. Uh, I thought he'd speak English, but, you know, maybe his English isn't very good. But he was speaking Span- Espanol, and it was translated. And he was very serious yeah, he was in what he good. was saying. And he, and if you listen, he was saying very good things. He called abortion mass murder, mm-hmm. and he said it's a way to control mm-hmm. the population. He has completely turned that country around. Oh, yeah. Um, and it shows you how one good leader like Malay or Trump can turn the trajectory of the country very quickly. It can be done very quickly. As easily as Biden is destroying this country, Trump can fix it very quickly. And I was very impressed by that guy. He started getting crazy at the end because that's his thing. And then, but he is a very serious, intelligent man. He's not a, he's not a clown. Okay. He knows what he's talking about and he's extremely on Trump's side. And it was funny because uh, you showed a video on Twitter of them meeting each other. And he was so excited to meet Trump. And Trump said, make Argentina great again. It's the same acronym, MAGA. And the guy went nuts. Um, so I, I, that was exciting to see him there. I didn't oh, think he was, I didn't know he was going to be there. It was a big deal. He came on after Trump because Trump had to go back to South Carolina and leave early, but he came on uh, right after and boy, was he impressive. Oh, I've yeah. never seen him speak before yeah, he's and, great. and I really was excited he's, that he was he's there. Great. He's great. Well, listen, we're out of time for today, but we will be back next time. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Thanks for listening. And we will talk to you next time.